Yo, I'm Sammy J, and I think today I'm going to talk to you about the Double XL cycle 2015. You know, I think they're halfway through it, they've just done all their freestyles, like, without on the beat. And I just want to talk about what I feel about it. I personally think that last year's one, 2014, had a better, um, a better list, to be fair. Like, not... This one is the year of the people that I don't feel everybody really knows. You have to be kind of underground, I feel like, to really know the talent in this year's one. Like, I think last year had the most anticipated one. That was the one that everyone thought was going to bang. And in my opinion, it was slightly disappointed. More because I am a Chance the Rapper fan and a Vic Mensa fan. And I thought that they didn't do as well as I would want them to. I mean, Chance the Rapper, like, for his freestyle, Acapella one, I thought it was good, that was him, but I was really waiting for what he was going to do on his, um, on beat one, and he ended up just using the verse that he's already done for a social experiment track, and I kind of like, felt really disappointed, and also the, um, that track they done, you know that they do a mixtape after it, Chance didn't even feature on it, the only person who really, like, caught my, not caught my attention, but was good as I wanted them to be was probably Isaiah Rashad, and I thought it was the year of Isaiah Rashad, Vic Mensa, Chance the Rapper, and freaking Jaron Bennett, and also, what's he called again? Um, uh, John Connor. And John Connor and Jared Benton like, kept up, but I just felt it was kind of like, underwhelming. So this year, I have really, because this is kind of, I call this the hipster year. The year of the hipster. Literally, you've got my nigga Gold Link, my nigga Rory, my nigga Vin Staples, and yeah, baby. Okay, every year, every year, the, what do you call them? The, the one hit wonders make it to the freshman list. And this time it's OG Mac, Maco, it's um, yeah, baby, and Shy Gizzy, who shouldn't be there. Bobby Schmurder should be in his place. What are you gonna do? I guess Bobby Schmurder's in jail or something like that. But anyway, I feel like this year I'm not as excited for it um, as last year's one. However, I'm quite excited for it because I didn't think someone like Gold Link would make it in, who's SoundCloud famous. And I didn't think that, um, Rory would make it in either because the only reason he's really on the map is because Kanye West gave him a shout out. I didn't really think that Rory and Gold Link would make it in. I thought that I did because they're not like prominent on, well, Rory is, but especially Gold Link, he's a SoundCloud, he's SoundCloud famous. He's not really prominent on, um, uh, YouTube, which most of the people would be in the music industry, usually YouTube is the route to go to kind of get on the freshman. You kind of viral, like OG Mako. I understand because he's a viral sensation. Yeah, baby, I understand because he's a viral sensation. And I don't care what anybody says. My nigga, Fetty Wap. My nigga, money, money. Fetty Wap, money, money. Can sign. He can sign. I don't care. Anyone said, yeah, I need the damn good songwriter. So I don't care. So I'm gonna go basically through their freestyles. Um, not in order, but baby. I thought, um, Fetty Wap, I don't get why you people are angry. Like this, I uh, you saw a YouTube comment and said, what we spent? Talib Kweli, he's, he's Fetty Wap. Like, what do you expect? He's obviously gonna sing, and, all, and the guy's obviously gonna, like, not do a good verse. He's obviously just gonna talk about money, hoes, and bitches. Like, I didn't, we weren't gonna get anything special from him. I'm waiting for his on beat verse, because I wanna see if he actually sings in that cadence and tone that he's out popularized for himself. I really want to see if he does that and how he's going to actually fit it into the cycle, that's the thing. Like, I found his off-beat freestyle more bleh. It was just like, what were you expecting? Like, I wasn't expecting much of him. What I... Deathloaf was um, second, I think. And, uh... I'm not really a fan of her, to be fair. But I think for a freestyle, it wasn't that bad, if you think like I thought, um... She done what she done. She does that sing rappy thing that she uh, tried to popularize, and her tone and cadence has gone through it. And I didn't think um, it was that bad. I thought that she's quite good for um, for her anyway. Like she's not really. I, I'm not really a fan of um, what is it? Dead. I could keep on calling her definitely dead, you know, whatever it is. I could call her death. I don't know why. But for our one, I didn't really pay attention to it because she's not really my preference. But I found it good. I found it like, you know, her flow and her tone, it would have came through. But my nigga Bib Staples, she's probably top two. Oh, top three for me. No, no, no. Mm, top two. You probably had the top two freestyle. He just went in. The thing is, I really can't relate to Vince Staples' lifestyle because I'm not really hood or haven't come from a struggle like that. But just kind of like the the earnest 
business. I find it was kind of like he's not telling us this to show up, he's telling us this like, because that's just the way it's been. And what was the line that he said that I was like, Whoo! Oh, I can't even remember. But every like when he was like, he just keeps some um something like, oh, it was near the end. Oh, um, I can't even remember. I'm not gonna try and quote anyone, but I'm going to run down. This is all this off the top of my head. I'm just gonna talk about. But like, I really like and I love his flow. It's relaxed and um, uh, laid back. And I'm kind of like um, one thing that one flow I love from the staple, the thing that he does um, the flow that he does with Blue Suede, and he also does it in um, the song that he does with Blue Suede. The Blue Suede, dun dun. Oh, what's it? Um, it's just a flow. It's like dun dun and dun dun. Oh, how do you do it? Um, dun 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 And like he does that flow, and I really like it. I just like feel like it's bouncy, but also laid back. This thing's got that laid back, truthful style that I like. So I thought, think that out of everybody, he's gonna be the most consistent. He kind of reminds me of like the John Connor of the year, the guy who should be on it, the guy that can spit, but the guy that won't blow up because. He's just not got enough commercial appeal about him, if you know what I mean. The commercial appeal is not going to kind of get him to the success that he should be. My next one, my nigga Rory. My nigga Rory. Now, I call Rory the guy who you should only hear the official version to. Because the guy sucked tonight. Like, I think he sucked. Like, I saw him too. I'm a, a rendition of Blood and the Leaves and sing my favourite song of his cigarette song live. No, my favourite song of his is probably he'd feature on Joey Badass's um, album uh, Escape. Can't stop it like that. I think. But I call think I call him that young Andre 3000. The thing is, is that I know what he's trying to do but I feel like over the year, over this year he's kind of rehearsed himself and perfected his live ability like he i felt like he knew how he wanted everything to sound but when he was doing it live since it's all live and there he couldn't really do it like he used to stutter and mumble and his kids wasn't there and he wasn't really um his diction didn't come out. he didn't really understand what he said but this role he's come out he's rehearsed he's more confident in his artistry and he knows what he's doing and i thought that's all coming out like his flow was good his cadence was good, you could understand what he was saying and it was more confident in the way he was delivering stuff. So I feel like Rory's really stepped up this level, which is what I really like about him. I want to hear Rory sing, I want to hear him bring in his singing talent because the thing is he's a very talented songwriter and I want to see him bring it into the double XL. He's good, he's a good lyricist, he, he's reminded everyone of that young Andre 3000 and like I think that's a good route for him. I kind of feel like he's Andre 3000 who is more who's more, what's it called again, indie, than someone like a B.O.B. which people compare him to 2002. So I thought, right, nah, nah, nigga, Gold Link. I did not expect Gold Link to come out of that with his freestyle. It was kind of like a spoken word. It was kind of like talking about black um, supremacy and the kind of, what's it called again, the perpetual motion that black people are putting in, which I'm pretty sure he stole from Loaded Lux. I'm pretty sure he stole the line from Loaded but we don't know. I didn't expect him to come out of that because if you hear the subject matter in um, his project, God Complex, it's kind of literally just about the streets, holes and money and stuff like that. He doesn't seem, Gold Link didn't seem as deep. I kind of like Gold Link's sound rather than his substance. But when he come up with this freestyle, I was like, damn, like, damn. I didn't expect Gordon to go in like that, to be fair. I just didn't expect it. Tink! I know everyone's gonna hate me for this. I'm already a Tink fan. I don't really care. She can sing, she can rap. Okay, that's nice. She's yeah. She's just not really my taste. Her free, her style was good, especially how she um, incorporated her singer into it. But I just, uh, I just, I just, I thought it was just blood. I just didn't really care for it. But I just thought I'm not really a fan of it. She just kind of got enough, she's got nothing that really stands out to me. She's like, yeah, she can sing, yeah, she can rap. It's kind of like a John Connor thing again. I call her a female, female John Connor. You can wrap your ass off, but you just got nothing about you that's gonna really push you forward, that really propel you. Like I feel like in this kind of day, there's a lot of lyricists out there, but there isn't really a spe spectacle. Like there's not no really like show factor or like wow factor in them. Like say Fetty Wap, I feel like I like him more because he's got a wow factor to him, like something that sticks out, something that's sellable. But Tink is just like. A damn good rapper, but that's it. Like nothing really come like something that appeals to me. Nothing that really like kind of hits my hipster taste per se. Sly so give skip that nigga. Like skip that nigga. K Cam, what's it called again? That's I have a soft spot for K Cam because I just think that guy just cool. Like the beat, he just he's just cool in it. Like he's just cool. Like his freestyle was better than I thought it was gonna be. Much better than I thought it was gonna be. Um. But I just want to hear he's on beat stuff, if I'm being honest, because like, he's on beat stuff and just... I 
I just want to hear him sing. You know, I just want to see what he does. I have a feeling he's gonna kind of be like French Mont. I have a feeling his freestyle is gonna be like um, Little Dirk's one on last year's. It's not gonna be singing. That's just gonna be rapping. Oh OG Mac, I don't know what that guy, he forgot his lyrics halfway through. He was like, with the kids that are, um, uh, yeah, with the kids that are this, with the kids that are that. It's like he was just, like, talking to someone, trying to be, like, deep, but not really being deep enough at all. He was trying to be deep, but just, like, missing over his words. And I was like, nigga, you okay? Like, nigga, nigga you want some water? You, you want to start again, nigga? Start again? Yes? No. Stop. Mum interrupted me, so I'm just gonna have to splice this in. And um, the last one is uh, Kid Kid. Uh, Kid Kid, I've never really cared for Kid Kid, and I don't even understand why that guy has a following. His freestyle is actually much better than I thought it much better. But I kind of, I, I, I don't I don't understand why the guy's famous, if I'm being honest. I, I really don't. Like, I know that um, 50 Cent picked him up. I know that the nigga gets cut off of hit songs. Does that not tell us something? He gets cut off of hit songs. He got cut off of Forever apparently, and he got cut off of 50 um, Cent and Kendrick Lamar's um, uh, what's it called again? We up nigga. It's like what? The guy gets cut off and he's the guy's been out for time. The guy's been out for he. I, I don't get why does he have a following? Why does he have a following? I, do, I don't. I don't get it. I'm. I just. I'm against him just not into reason. I just. It's making me sweat. This quite This is making me sweat. It's making me sweat. I just, I just, the list all together is a good list. Minus some random niggas. But as they are, I think that it's not top my favourite year. My favourite year was um the year of the OG. It was Absol, Action Brunson, Joey Badass. Schoolboy Q, Logic, Trinidad J. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's it? Um, Dizzy Wright. Who else was in it? Uh, those just bad. There was sick people in it. Those ones that stood out. Like that was a year of me. Like I feel like in every freshman list, someone has to blow. And 2014 was just disappointing because nobody really blew from that year. I mean, Vic Mint is on the right rise ish now, but he hasn't really blown. Like, from the year before that, 13, Schoolboy Q blew, Logic blew somewhat, um, Joey Badoff blew somewhat, Absol blew somewhat, what's it called again, um, Action Bronson blew, so they're all like blowing, like, the freshman list is up, up and coming, people are supposed to get there, and from this list, one thing that I keep on thinking is, I actually don't know who from this list is going to blow that isn't already blowing, I thought that Dejlo is on her way up and doesn't really need this, I feel like Fetty Wap, Ha should blow. I don't know if he's gonna stay in the game because I feel like he's brought out his banger too early. Like he brought out Trap Queen, then he brought out My Way straight away. And I don't know if he's gonna have power to sustain. I'm hoping Gold Link will blow because he's personally my favourite and I see star power in Gold Link. Especially from people who are in um more of a dance scene. Like I can see him collabing with people like Disclosure and I can see him collabing with people like Al uh, uh, Jewels and people like that. I see him and that was Sam Smith and stuff like that. I see him finding himself in a dark space. But I don't know who from this list is really going to blow. Rory, I don't think will blow. Tink, I don't think will blow. Mistake, I don't think will blow. Kid Kid, I don't think will blow. OG Mako, I don't think he can sustain it. I feel this list is the year of people who are hot and hit stuff. But I don't think any of them will blow. I think someone who has got the best chance of sustaining is. Fetty Wap because I think he's a good songwriter and I feel that Dej Loaf will just sustain himself in the game with a hook from hook K Camp. I see him staying in the same position. I don't feel any of these people will blow. I think Gold Link will have the best chance of blowing. I'm not really even in hip hop, in more pop rap and dance music and literally like deep house. That's where he's going to survive in. But hopefully he's going to make a whole new genre. But I have, I am a Gold Link fan and I can see him having the most star power. But then it can be sound like famous, and that's a hard transition to make into real life. Man. So the person I see, I think I've seen him done that. So let's. And that's not even hit one. But I love these people. But that's my opinion on them all. It's a good list. I like it. It's got three people I really like. Four people I really like, sorry. But my favourites out of all of them 
Ben Staples, Gold Link, Rory. Yeah, baby! I'm Toby J. Alright, check out my music, check out my website. Yeah, baby!